guys, I wanted to say something on behalf of uh, uh, Paul. Um, I know he probably wants to say this. I don't know if he can or not. But are we just going to let Tim Tebow do whatever he wants? I mean, this man sat here and told us he could play Major League Baseball and couldn't hit a baseball worth, a, worth anything. And, you know, we aren't that far removed from that. And now he's asking Urban Meyer to try out to the, at tight end for the Jaguars. I'd like to try out for the Jaguars, too. So if we just handing these out, I'll take one, too. Later, guys. Thank you, Steve. And I just think, I mean, this is a Hall of Fame person. He's so good. He can come back seven, eight years after he retired. Nine. Um, You've counted the years. It's 2012. He can play pro baseball. He can play football at two different eras. Super media guy. Uh, Incredible young man. Um, Armstrong. I love him. And, if, of course, Paul knows the exact years. I mean, he's missed him. Yeah. He, he counts the days on his wall. When he retired, was there a tear? <laughs> Maybe of joy. <laughs> well, you know, he just uh, Urban Meyer just bought a house next to Tim Tebow oh. uh, for $2.2 million. So Tebow was, was living good off that baseball money, apparently. But, yeah, they're now neighbors. And uh, he, he, I guess they're going to be a part of the same organization. I mean, you know, because he said one – he yeah. says a prayer before he goes out in the field. Obviously, oh he's gosh. a good athlete. Uh, you know, obviously, he obviously won a he's a Heisman. He, won, I mean, he he's, won yeah, he's a, He was a, he was a, a national yeah, title. He had a great he had a great couple of years in college. I I don't look and I, and he ran rough shot over who I love in college, but that's fine. Uh, my problem with Tim Tebow was not then; it was afterwards Uh-oh. where Uh-oh. he got a pass for being a <laughs> mediocre athlete oh just gosh. because you know he loves Jesus. So does a lot of people. I mean, like you know, why are we giving him a pass? And, like, there's this is zero sum game in sports. You're good or you're not. In the pro sports. And he, like, that's what annoyed me about it was like, oh, well, he can be okay because he seems like he's nice. There's a lot of nice guys in sports. There's a lot. It is amazing how he was able to all by himself cover up the number of convicts on the Florida football team at the time. Like, it's like all we saw was Tim Tebow. Don't look for Aaron Hernandez and the Pouncey Twins and, like, you know, like countless others from that Florida run that they had. But, no, I mean, I'm – I've always been somebody who I, I definitely got real tired of the Tebow talk when ESPN was really at their worst with that, when it was just like all the time. And you would have thought that this was Walter Payton and like uh, Barry Sanders and Joe Montana and Tom Brady all rolled into one the way they used to talk about him. I mean, it was ridiculous the amount of just love fest that they they had for that guy. So I, I could understand why. It's nothing against him personally. It was just like he was shoved down our throats for like three years. And then we had to have the baseball stuff shoved down our throats and his time in the NFL shoved down our throats. And, you know, obviously he brings eyeballs. I mean, I don't know why else he was so interesting to talk about. And and he was no different than other guys who have won national championships at quarterback. One better than most of them, quite frankly, that won national champions at quarterback all around him. So, yeah, I don't know about him being a tight end right now in the NFL. I mean, how old is he at this point? He's 34? Well, it's it. here's the thing. I don't know how old he is, but it, Armstrong, isn't it amazing he could still play it at the level that he plays, that he has that kind of confidence and the interest from Jacksonville? It's almost, it's almost superhuman. It is. Yeah. It's almost as if he could be Jim Thorpe, <laughs> Jesse Owens, I agree. Bo Jackson, oh, Dion. Yeah. I think he's definitely on the level with Bo Jackson. Are you now, okay? Can we? Now, 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 now you just crossed. You? Now you just crossed the line. You just crossed the line. Not we lose even. you for the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah. I, I even look. I'm sure. I, I don't know if he's a nice guy or not. I've always kind of felt he's a bit of a phony. I also don't think he's very good on television. I think he says dumb things and he wraps it up in a rah rah talk. And so people are like, oh my god, he's fired up. And then if you listen to the actual <laughs> words that come out of his his mouth, it's like. You know, do you write in crayon, dude? What's going on? No, like, I'm with Paul on this. I think he's... Uh, he's a terrible analyst. I, he's awful. I just think he's kind of a cheese ball. <laughs> yeah. I really do. I, I, I think he's kind of a cheese ball. But uh, <sighs> I don't hate him at all. I, I don't really dislike him at all. I just find the, the coverage of him and Paul's reaction to him kind of funny. When we come back... <laughs> I'd rather have Maroon 5 play here right now than see Tim Tebow. What? I'll tell you right now. Yes. What about that country singer? Oh, Rascal Flatts. No, they no, have Tim no, Tebow. The, the, the single guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, they can. They can all. They can all sink in the same damn boat. All right. So, um, not a good day to bring that up when I mention what happened. <laughs> uh, when we come back, Grayson Grunhag, Hey, for recruiting analyst, Sikkim three sixty five radio. Riverbend Liquor and Wine, a place I'm happy to go to on the 
way home just to get over all this.